Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today I'm going to be taking you through my next video on decision mathematics and networks. And we're going to be looking at backward scanning and crashing. Now I'm hoping you've watched our previous two videos on forward scanning and also looking at how to set up one of the network diagrams and activity charts because that's prerequisite knowledge for this particular video. We will go over again float times, critical paths, earliest start times and latest um, latest start times as part of this video as well so hopefully that will consolidate some of what you've learned. If you're watching this video you're in Year 12 General Maths in Queensland then please do like and subscribe to this channel. Let's get started. So in my first video we had a look at forward scanning through a fairly simple process which was an activity of me getting ready for work. Now I've changed up some of the times on here just to make it a little bit more obvious when we're doing some backward scanning through the network. It's a bit harder to see when everything's one minute in duration. So we're going to be looking at this process with some slightly different tweaks on the times but basically all the different parts of the process are fundamentally the same. So if you remember when we forward scan through the network we put the earliest start time at the beginning of each um, half of the left hand side of each vertex. So that was the earliest that I could start activity D which is boiling the kettle would be at the two minute mark because I have two predecessors unpacking my backpack and storing my lunch in the fridge which takes two minutes. So that's where we get the two from one plus one. Now backward scanning starts at the end of the network on the right hand side and works its way backwards to the left taking away from each vertex each time the activity time. So this will make more sense once we get started doing it. So we're going to record our latest start time in the right hand side of each vertex. So at the end of our process that's not going to be changed at all. The latest that we can start our um, next activity if there was another process after this process would be at the 16 minute mark so it's not going to change. Let's work our way backwards across the top of our network now which was the process of drinking my coffee and if I take away the time that it takes for activity F from the end time 16 take away 4 minutes equals 12 and that's what I write into the right hand side all the way along the top of that process. So 12 take away 2 is 10, 10 take away 3 gives me 7 minutes and I stop there because when I reach that next vertex on the left hand side um, that vertex there represents a decision uh, making place. I've got three pathways that I can follow at this point and three parallel processes. So we're going to stop there and we're going to make our decision later on when we've completed all of the remaining vertices along the other processes. So now I'm going to move along the bottom of the network which is actually my critical path and you'll notice that when I take 16 and I from the very right hand side and I take the 8 minutes away for activity I, I end up with 8 in the right hand side of that vert vertex. So basically what's happening along our critical path is that the left hand side and the right hand side of our vertices are not going to change. So notice that there all the way along the bottom um, all the numbers on the left and the right hand side of that vertex are going to be the same for the critical path activities. And now I need to complete my remaining two vertices on that left hand side. Firstly I've got that one just before activity B, J and C starts and I need to make a decision here. Now I could, if I moved across the top, I've got activity B, 7, take away the time it takes for activity B which is 1 minute. So I could choose to put 6 minutes in there or I've got 16, take away 5 for activity J which gives me 11 minutes or from the very bottom activities I've got 4, take away 3 which gives me 1 minute. So I always choose the smallest amount in this particular vertex which is of course going to be 1 minute. Now that makes a lot of sense because this is also on the critical path. So A, J, C, G, H, I is my whole critical pathway. So at this particular decision point I could have just written straight in there number one because I know it's part of the critical path. And that's the same for my very starting vertex as well. That's going to be the number zero because that does not change. So when I'm wanting to look after I've backward scanned the network, I could have actually taken a quick shortcut and really reduced my brain power there. And straight away, anything that's on that critical path, if I know what the critical path is, I can just make sure that the numbers on the left and the right hand side all the way along are the same from start to finish. And then all I have to do is think about that remaining activities on any other pathways. Also if I'm given a network that I haven't set up myself and I'm asked to backward scan and 
or if it's all been done for me, I could always identify the critical path just at a glance because that's the one where the vertices numbers are the same on both sides. So if you're ever given a question asked to identify the critical path and the, this work of backward and forward scanning has been done for you, that's your quick shortcut. Just look for the vertices where the numbers are the same. That's this pathway along the bottom. Okay, so every number in this vertex, you might be wondering why on earth would I be putting these numbers in there? What's the point of it? Well, it provides us with some key information about our processes. So the earliest start time for each activity for the next activity that's following is going to be shown on the left hand side. So for activity F, which is drinking my coffee, the earliest I could start drinking my coffee is at the seven minute mark into the process. The latest start time for drinking my coffee would be the 12 minute mark. So I've got basically about five minutes up my sleeve before I could start drinking the coffee. The latest start time tells me that if I start any later than that, then the whole process will end up blowing out. I've got something also new called the latest finish time. And that's the latest finish time for the previous activity. So that's activity E, which is making the coffee. So the right hand side of that vertex also tells me that the latest I could possibly finish making that coffee is going to be the 12 minute mark. So I've got these three key pieces of information that I can draw out of my diagram. We can also use the diagram to calculate float times. And I always think it's a good idea to set this information up in a table if you're asked to find float time of all the different activities. Now you might be thinking to yourself, if you're a little bit switched on, don't I just take the right hand side of the vertex, take away the left hand side and I've got my float time straight away? Well, yes, but not always. So it's a good time, a good, good um, idea to use the formula that we're going to be introducing in a moment. So I've set this little particular table up. I'm going to record the earliest start time and the latest finish time for each of my activities. And using that information as well as the activity time, I'll be able to calculate the float time. Now remember, there's no float time on our critical path. We've got no room to wiggle. So I can simply start to fill this out. And here's my formula that I'm going to use. Float time is equal to the latest finish time, take away the earliest start time, take away the activity time. Now this is not going to be on your QCAA formula sheet, so you do need to memorize this formula. So let's look at how we work that out for activity A. The earliest start time comes from, for activity A from our previous vertex on the left hand side. So that's zero. And the latest finish time comes from the next vertex afterwards on the right hand side. So then I can fill out the formula. The float time for activity A is equal to 1, being the latest finish time, take away the earliest start time of zero, 0, take away my activity time. So that just proves that the float time is 0, and we know that's the case on our critical path. We could do the same for activity C. So remember, we pull out the, the earliest start time from the left-hand side of the previous vertex, or the vertex just before activity C starts, and then we pull the latest finish time from the right hand side of the vertex where C finishes. So now I've got the float time is also going to be zero and that's going to be the same for all of our activities on our critical pathway. And that's why they're all equal to zero. So I filled that information out. And if you want to pause here and just verify that for yourself, that'd be a great idea. Okay, let's look at some of those activities that are not on our critical path. So I've got activity J. So um, I'm going to pull, sorry, that's for activity I there. Activity J, let's pull out um, the information from the left-hand side of that vertex just before activity J starts, that's one. And then from the vertex at the end after J finishes, 16, take away one, take away five, gives me 10 minutes of float time for activity J. Now you might recall activity J was eating my breakfast. So basically I could take up to 10 extra minutes to eat my breakfast before I start to have a problem with um, my um, overall process. Now remember we talked about earlier how you could take the right hand side and take away the left hand side and you could get your float time and that works sometimes. But as you can see for activity J, it doesn't quite work here. And that's because activity J is one of those processes that um, feeds very simply from the beginning to the end of the process. So if I was to take one away from one, I'd end up with zero float time, which is not correct for activity J. So be very careful with taking little shortcuts like that. It's a great idea just to follow this formula. Let's look at our top um, pathway, which was the pathway of making my coffee. 
So for activity B, I take the information of one minute is the earliest start time for activity B, and I'm gonna pull the next piece of information, my latest finish time from the right hand side of the vertex after activity B. And then I'm gonna do my sum here, seven, take away one, take away one, gives me five minutes of float time and so on for the remaining processes that fit along that top activity. Okay, so now let's have a little talk about what crashing means, because I talked about that and it's not about crashing motor vehicles in our processes, but I thought that was a cool picture. Okay, crashing is the process where we can shorten our whole project. And it only happens if we can reduce the time that we take on our critical path. That makes sense. Our critical path is the longest it's gonna take for us to get through the process. At the moment, that's 16 minutes. If I wanna make sure that my um, getting ready for work is gonna be done in a shorter period than 10, 16 minutes, I need to reduce something on that critical pathway. So um, this what can sometimes, when we reduce that critical pathway's time, it can create a different critical pathway in our network. So it's something to be very aware of. If I change the time along the bottom, it might mean that I've got a new critical path. So let's have a look and we're gonna crash my particular process that we started with. Let's say I've now got a meeting that's been inserted into my morning and I have to get my meeting um, to be able to attend that, I have to be able to do everything in 10 minutes. Um, that means I've got to take six minutes out of my critical path. So I'm going to examine my critical path and let's say I've identified some activities that I can do what's called a time reduction crash. So instead of taking three minutes to check my emails, I'm going to reduce that time by two minutes. And instead of taking eight minutes to reply to my emails, I'm going to um, take four minutes out of that. So two plus four, it gives me the six minutes that I need to reduce my process by. So the first thing I'm gonna do is write my new activity times on the network diagram. So now H originally took three minutes, I'm crashing out two minutes, so that's gonna take one. Notice I've written those in red, a different color, and then um, replying to the emails, originally took eight minutes, I'm taking four minutes out of the process, so that's now gonna be four minutes on the network diagram. So now what I need to do is forward scan back through the, the critical pathway where I made those changes. So basically, it doesn't really affect anything um, in terms of forward scanning up to the point where I hit H. But um, basically, I'll just go back a step there. Basically, after H, once I've now got this new crashing that's taking place, um, I've got five plus one will give me six on the left-hand side of that vertex after activity H. And now I've got this choice for my final vertex. I can either take six minutes across activity J or across my top pathway, I could take 11 minutes or across the bottom pathway now, I've got a 10 minute pathway. So basically what I've done is I've created a new critical pathway and it has to be that top um, a, B, D, E, F becomes my new critical path because seven plus four minutes gives me 11 minutes. So now I've had to just make adjustments to the left-hand side of the vertices that are affected, which was along the original critical path. Now, I have to backward scan through my whole network now because I've changed the critical path and I've changed some processes. So when I backward scan, I'm gonna be starting from the 11 minute mark. So I've got to basically rub out everything on the right-hand side of every vertex and start again. The only thing that's not gonna change is my starting vertex and that vertex between, um, well, the vertex just after A because it's still on the critical path and it hasn't changed. So let's work our way backwards, remembering that on our critical path, both sides of the vertex will have the same number. So I can quickly just insert all those new numbers. And now I've got to work backwards for my remaining activities on the old critical path. So I'm going to basically um, calculate new um, numbers on those right-hand sides of the vertex. So 11 take away that new number four is going to give me seven minutes. And then take away that new number one, that new time will give me six minutes. Take away that other activity of activity G and that brings me back to the beginning. So now I've backward and forward scanned my whole way through my new network. Now. What this meant was I've actually only reduced, even though I took six minutes out of my original critical path, it's actually only reduced my um, overall process by five minutes because my critical path ended up changing. 
So that would mean that I would need to re-examine my new critical path again and find another step to reduce by a minute. So sometimes crashing won't be done in one series. You might have to do it again. So I'd have to look through here, through that other process of A, B, D, E, F and see if I could find a minute to pull out there. I could probably just drink my coffee a bit faster and it'd be all good. Also, what this means is now that I've changed my critical path, that all my float times are going to change right throughout my whole network. So I've got new um, latest finish times um, and latest start times for most of my activities, which is where I got those numbers on the right hand side of the vertices. And now I've got a new critical pathway where the float um, time is going to be zero across the top, but across the bottom, we're going to have some float time to recalculate. Well, that's all we have time for today. It'd be a great idea if you maybe want to go back to the previous slide and maybe you could recalculate all the new float times for practice. Have a lovely day. This is Natalie McClutchy on McClutchy Maths and hope to see you again soon.